Today is inevitably a, quite an emotional day for me. Um, uh, as Louisa was saying, Dad is 90 on the 29th of this month. And although he was born in Cambridge, uh, if you said, what, where's home? He would unhesitatingly say Leicester. Leicester has played a massive part in his life. The first um, trip to Leicester that I remember um, was coming up in 1970 um, with the whole family for the opening of the huge Attenborough building on the university campus, which people often erroneously believe um, is named after my father and my uncle, and it certainly isn't, and they'd be the first to deny it. My dad and my uncle David received honorary doctorates, and the youngest of the three of them, my uncle John, opened uh, the building. And I remember him showing me round uh, the university campus, and he took me to uh, a building called College House, uh, which was his home, and I could see him get a little lump in his throat as he went up to the very top of the house and walked into the room for probably a great deal of time, uh, which was his bedroom as a boy. He has been, certainly in the early part of his life, and this is not common knowledge, uh, the black sheep of the family, because at the age of 18, he went to his academic father and he announced he didn't want to go to university. And not to put too fine a point on it, grandpa was absolutely appalled and said, don't be ridiculous, Richard. You are going to university. I won't hear any more about it. But um, as Louisa would testify, um, he doesn't tend to accept the word no very readily. So in the end, Grandpa put it to him as an educational challenge. He said, OK, Dick, if you get the top scholarship at the finest acting academy in the world, you will go there. If you don't, you will go to university and I don't want to hear any more about it. And he got the Leverhulme scholarship to RADA and the rest is history. But RADA, he met my mother. Uh, they met in 1941, which means they've been together for 72 years and married for 68 of them. And here we are standing in a building that is about the arts that bears his name. And I think it's very important for me to share with you a very basic philosophical belief that dad has. It's to do with the word education, but it's not to do with the word education that a lot of us understand by that word, which is to do with exams and qualifications and subjects and curricula and so on. But dad, if he was standing here, would say, I don't believe in that. I'm not terribly interested in an education that stuffs kids with facts and information, which are then regurgitated in an exam and probably a year later forgotten. I'm interested in an education that brings out the individuality, the personality of every single person benefiting from that education. And that's what led Dad to go back to the town that he came from and say, I want to build an art center that is there for everybody, that is accessible for everybody, with or without disability. I think it's true to say there are two buildings in the world that he cares most about. One is RADA, which indeed he put um, his efforts into raising 25 million pounds to rebuild. It took years off his life. Um, and the other one is this one. And I say that unhesitatingly. I have a photograph right next to my bed. It's the most gorgeous photograph. And it's a very elderly man with a, with a sort of Santa Claus beard, walking hand in hand with a very beautiful woman about three inches, four inches taller than him. And it's him walking from the helicopter through a field to come and open this building with Princess Diana. My parents went to the same hotel, the same beach, the same uh, restaurant year after year after year. Um, but the one benefit was that we used to go every holiday up into the hills to a tiny little village behind Cannes called Valeries. And Valeries is a pottery town, but it's full of the most disgustingly horrible, vulgar, brightly painted sort of souvenir 
pottery you've ever seen in your life. But going through the little side streets, you then came to this gravel car park, to a place called the Madura Gallery. Now, and this was where Picasso, who of course was alive at the time, exhibited all his new editions of his ceramics. But he would go in and he would buy three or four a year. And I remember so clearly, I was the eldest of my, uh, of my siblings, and um, when I was a small kid, he drove in his singularly inappropriate Bentley all the way through, all the way through England, down through France uh, to come on holiday. So there he was in the car park of the Madura Gallery, and they, he'd choose his editions, and, and they'd wrap them up in brown paper and stick them in the boot uh, of his Bentley. And then at the end of the holiday, we'd drive back through France. And I remember so clearly <clears throat> us being stopped at customs and uh, somebody saying, oh, uh, uh, Sir, Sir Richard, what's that in the brown paper? What's in? He said, oh, it's a really sort of rather eccentric uh, bit of pottery by a rather obscure artist. He said, let us have a look. And they opened it up and, and looked at this, you know, strange, you know, abstract shape. And just said, oh, I can see it, and put it back again. And <clears throat> totally believed him that he was not importing major pieces of art. <laughs> he got away with that year after year after year. But again, it's no accident that two-thirds of that collection is currently on loan to a museum in Leicester, there for everybody. That's very central to, to his belief. When he was um, appointed to the House of Lords, uh, I remember going along nervously to watch his maiden speech. There's a very, by the way, a very curious um, tradition, which is that um, as the son, it's very sexist, as the son of a peer, you have the right to sit on the steps of the throne no, women aren't allowed it. Um, and um, so I thought, well, I'm, 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 I may not agree with its principle, but I'm certainly going to do it. Um, and um, so I remember sitting, you know, in quite casual trousers like I'm wearing today, and a pair of jeans, and, and, uh, uh, and a pair of trainers, and sat on the steps uh, of the throne where, where the queen gives her queen speech, and watching him speak. I think he said, I've never been so comprehensively upstaged in all my life. It was this boy sitting on the steps of the throne. I'm trying to give this speech. <laughs> but in his speech, he said, the arts are not a prerequisite of the privileged few, nor are they the playground of the intelligentsia. The arts are for everyone, and failure to include everyone diminishes us all.